you might want to watch this video till the end. Yup, overthinking, not really a disease, but it really is a disease. A lot of you wanted me to make more videos on mental health and I'm so happy that you do because that is a cause that really matters to me and I know for the past couple of weeks I've been posting about But mental health is still on my agenda. I hope you understand why it takes so much time because every time I want to make a video on a new disease, I don't just Google and make a video. I meet a lot of doctors, I talk to them, which is why it takes weeks for me to make a video on one disease. And if you really want to support my cause, please subscribe and like the video. But for now, I'll be talking about the one thing most of you ask me about, more than depression or anxiety. More people wanted to know the solution for overthinking and hence this video. So today, after talking to over 12 doctors, I'm going to tell you what is overthinking and what you can do about it. Now, overthinking is such a gigantic topic that if I squeezed everything into one video, it would be 40 minutes and none of you would watch it full. So I decided to make five videos out of it. In each video, I'll be talking about a different solution. I recommend you watch each of these videos and try the solution that fits you the best. But for now, let's start with part one. There's a darkness. We have all felt it inside us. The darkness of thoughts, the darkness of feelings. And no matter how much you run away from it, it finds you again and again. But where does this darkness stem from? Well, it comes from a very dark machine, which I call the human brain. This human brain is a brilliant machine, really. It was designed for you to think. But what happens when the machine goes on overdrive? What happens when the human brain overthinks? Your head gets foggy and the screws inside the machine go loose. And so for ages and centuries, people wondered how do you defeat this ghost of overthinking, this darkness which stays within you. After failed attempts of finding a solution, people thought that maybe staying busy is the answer. Because every time you're not busy, every time you are not doing something, suddenly this darkness inside you would get up and start looking for you. So people thought that the only way to get away from this darkness was to stay busy. You constantly keep on doing something or the other. You keep yourself occupied, cycle, run, swim, whatever you want, just keep yourself busy. And soon they realized that this was merely but a temporary solution. Because no matter how busy you are in life, there will come a moment when you have to pause. And the minute you sit down, overthinking will find you again. That is, of course, if you have not found the permanent solution of fixing overthinking. So what is the permanent solution of fixing overthinking? Well, to get to that, we have to first understand why do we overthink. Let's go to the basics again. Overthinking, like I told you, is a product of this complex machine called your brain. Now this brain machine, it's really good at everything it does, including thinking. But the whole of it does not think. The brain can be divided into two parts. One part, the practical one, that thinks. The other part, the emotional one, that feels. The part you also call the heart. The part that is very well capable of hurting. And throughout your life, the practical side of your brain is constantly trying to keep the emotional side of your brain safe. Safe from breaking, safe from hurting. And this practical side of brain only knows one thing, which is thinking. So when it comes to keeping your emotional side okay, it goes overboard and starts overthinking. When your emotions collide with your intelligence and it creates a lot of thoughts. And these thoughts keep sucking you in and in further inside the darkness. But is there a way out to break from this never-ending spiral? Of course, look for the pattern. The darkness within you must come from a really dark place. A place probably just as dark as the universe. But just like the universe, your brain too is made of galaxies and stars. 
the galaxies of thoughts and the stars of emotions which are constantly coming your way, shooting at you one after another. And yeah, this can be tiring, so tiring that you don't even want to try. And that's when overthinking takes over you and it starts running your whole life. Okay, okay, it may not look this dramatic, but it definitely looks something like this. A hot cup of coffee right in front of you. You are at a really nice place, but your mind is completely zoned out. But before you get sucked into this never-ending darkness, always remember the principle of one leads to another. This principle of tackling overthinking says that one thought leads to another and thus the cycle continues. Let me tell you how it works by story. This is John. Uh-oh, -uh, this was John as a kid. John is a chronic overthinker. Everything he does, he has to overthink it. So what happens is when John is walking, he's constantly asking himself questions. Is someone watching me? Oh, someone is watching me. Then should I walk like this? Or should I walk like that? Oh, so if I walk like this, would I be cool enough? If I don't walk like that, would I be funny? And thus John ends up continuing to overthink everything. Ten years later, John has become an adult. Everything's working out for John, except for his overthinking. If he doesn't get a reply right away, he will start cooking up mountains and heaps of assumptions in his head of possibly what went wrong. He would get restless and start thinking that his girlfriend has lost interest in him, but in reality, his girlfriend is just in the train and cannot reply. While your name may not be John, and you may not have a similar pattern of overthinking, but you know this is pretty much your story. John has a pattern of thoughts, one leading to another. The first phase is when you start questioning the different possibility. What if my girlfriend doesn't like me, in John's case? The second phase is when you think the outcome of the worst possibility. In John's case, if his girlfriend doesn't like him, and then she's not replying to him. The third phase is shock. When you understand the outcome of your worst fear, you're obviously going to be shocked. The fourth phase is realizing that it is true without having any evidence. And the fifth phase is already being scared for something that probably isn't even true. And the sixth phase and the seventh phase and so on. So it all starts with one thought. And then it goes on to become so many thoughts. But wait, in reality, it's not a straight arrow diagram. In reality, it is one thought after another, getting you trapped furthermore inside the realms of overthinking. And yes, it's pretty chaotic. But if there is any sense that you can make out of this chaos is that this is the flow your overthinking has. First thing you have is a random thought. And from that random thought, you get an opportunity to either not think about it or to maybe touch it. And the minute you touch that thought, you're further tempted to explore it. And that's when you dive inside the possibilities and outcomes. And now you're officially overthinking. Just like any other disease, overthinking too has stages. The first stage of the random thought, the second stage when you touch the thought, the third stage when you're probably getting into it, and the fourth stage when you're already there. But in all these stages, the one thing that stays common is, you are sad. As soon as you hit the first stage of getting a random thought, you'll be shocked. And after that shock, you'll be sad. This principle wants you to stop your overthinking at the stage one. The minute you see yourself catching the first thought, you have to actively work at stopping yourself right there. Of course, this is not going to be easy because your brain is designed to think. And that's where the practice part comes into the picture. Practice patiently. Every time you get a thought that's only going to make you sad or probably doesn't give you a solution to your problems, you have to blow that thought away. Every time. Think of your thoughts like water drops and each drop that goes out is contributing to a bigger sea and you have to stop each and every drop that's unnecessary. So try this method out. 
And if this method doesn't work out for you, remember there are four more videos waiting for you. You can try any of these methods and tell me in the comments which one worked the best. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more such videos.